All right, time to drive to work. Let's get going. Oh, man. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Launch Problem Solver Series. Once again, I'm Harry Spilden, Product Development Manager here at Launch Tech USA. In the Problem Solver Series, we bring you the real automotive problems and we solve them using the launch products, using the repair techniques and procedures. Once again, I'm working with my highly skilled friend, master technician, Tony Shelton, here at John's Automotive in sunny San Diego, California. We got a good one for you today. And today's episode is all about, well, you guessed it, a dead battery. We're working on a 2006 Acura RL that Tony will help us solve this problem and report his findings. Hey guys, back again with the Launch Tech Problem Solver Series, and we're here with another problem that needs to be solved. Full disclosure, we're not working on the car in the glamour shots. We're actually working on this one. If you drive it every day, it stays charged, everything's good, but you let it sit for a couple of days for the weekend or what have you, and come Monday morning, it does not want to start. Battery's almost completely dead, and it makes for a bad morning. So today, we are going to be using the Launch Torque 5, and we'll be using its VCI in voltmeter mode this one also is a two channel lab scope as well you may have seen some of our other videos that we demonstrated it works really well i'm going to use it for its small form factor i can go inside and pull codes if i need to and it's just a real versatile tool everything's wireless it stays out of the way it's one of my go-to tools so let's go ahead and get started we'll open up the voltmeter app and do a basic voltage check and see where it sits that'll give us some insight into what's going on here and you probably won't be surprised to see 5.4 volts well that's not enough to start a car first things first let's make sure that we've got a good charging system and here at idle got about 13.9 volts that's looking good so I'm thinking we're looking for a draw on the battery key off engine off draw let's go down that route let's get started okay so first things first when testing for a parasitic draw we have some prerequisites got to make sure the battery is fully charged you definitely want to put it on a maintainer so that all of your testing is consistent voltage wise key off and away outside of the vehicle especially if you have a proximity key system because having the key anywhere near it can sometimes activate the body control module and the fuel pump and the car you know gets itself ready for being started so you want to make sure that's far far away from the car so that you don't have any false activations the next you're going to want to make sure that your door switches are all tripped kind of like this and you want to make sure you do the same thing with your trunk hood, glove box, anything with a switch that may keep the uh, body control module awake thinking that you're still you're still there. You want to unplug all your accessories, cell phone chargers, tom toms, radar detectors, anything like that that could be drawing current when the when the key's off. You want to have it unplugged. I found things as crazy as curling irons inside the center console plugged into a inverter whole different story but you just want to make sure there's nothing no vampire loads let the car sit for about an hour most cars will go to sleep in 10 15 20 minutes i know this one shuts down after 10 but i'd let it sit for an hour anyway and a complete cold soak if you're going to be doing your your search with a thermal imager because uh, you'll want everything to be the exact same temperature so letting it sit overnight works great for that Okay, for the beginning of this test, we're going to hook our meter in line, in series, to get our baseline amperage reading. That'll kind of give us an idea uh, which direction we're going to go based on the size of the load. i got a chart coming up here soon that'll kind of give you a, a rule of thumb ballpark area on, on what to look for, depending on what kind of readings you get. So let's move on to the next test. So here is our direct reading with the voltmeter in series. And looking at this chart here, we're looking for something BCM related, body control module, 
is awake and or other modules awake, you know, that could be controlled by the body control module. Something in that anywhere from 100 to 300 milliamp range sounds about right from what I've seen in the past. So what we're going to do next is individual circuit testing. We're going to do the voltage drop across the fuses like this. First, I want you to take a look at this fuse voltage drop table. This is for the mini fuses. That's what we're working with here. Take a look down here at this cross-reference chart, and it'll kind of give you an idea of what the millivolts equate to in milliamps. Really helpful here. You'll see how that works in the test coming up next. So here we are in the under hood fuse distribution panel, and we're going to test them one by one. See what we got. Oh, we got a little something there. All right, let's keep track of that one. And we'll just move along and do one by one. And if we don't find anything else here, I think that that 7.5 amp fuse may be the path that we're going to want to go down. So what we'll do next is see what that feeds, see where it goes probably goes to another fuse box and we'll go do some search in there. So as I suspected this fuse panel here powers down to this one that's down in the kick panel. So we're gonna go down there and do some testing. I got down here tested the fuses and found that there's another 7.5 amp fuse that powers the hands-free link module. So let's see what kind of reading we got here. The reading I got was pretty consistent with what we had earlier. Look at that. 20 millivolts. So I think we're on the right track here. This module powers the Bluetooth system for the hands free link phone calls, audio streaming, and to get a hold of the AccuraLink in case you have a problem. So we're going to go ahead and muscle this bad boy out of here and see what happens when we unplug it. See if maybe we can get rid of that draw. And take care of this customer's problem. One thing I didn't mention was that the customer said that his cell phone would stay linked to his car even after he got out of it and parked it. That might be the clue because this thing is still feels a little bit warm like it had been on for a while. Let's go check it out. So I said this thing was a little warm to the touch. Well, it was a little bit more than that. Go ahead and took this thing and checked its temperature. Check this out. Ooh, look at that thing glow. Ooh, doggy. Yeah, I'm reading like 90 degrees. Yeah, and the carbon shut off for hours. Crazy. So we're just going to leave that module out and look what we got. All solved. Well, there you have it. Another problem solved with a combination of Tony's high-level technician skill expertise and state-of-the-art equipment from Watch. We hope it was beneficial, and you'll be back to join us for another episode of the Launch Problem Solver Series. For more information, visit us at www.launchtechusa.com. Thank you.